We'll begin in child's pose. You're welcome. <laughs> so beginning on your mat with your big toes together, sitting back on your heels, and then slowly walking your hands forward. You could always bring a block or a pillow underneath your forehead for a little extra support. It can be nice to draw the knees out as wide as you like, as wide as feels comfortable today. And if you do have any yoga blocks, keep them handy for, for our practice. If you don't have any yoga blocks, just having a thick pillow or a couch cushion will work as well. Starting in Balasana, in your child's pose, forehead resting on a prop or on the earth, really allowing your hips to sink back toward your heels, letting your palms, your forearms, your elbows relax down toward the earth. Beginning in this child's pose, this gesture of introspection, of grounding. Child's pose is a very humbling gesture. As we bow to the earth, as we bow to our own selves, notice the parts of your body that are connected to the earth. Palms, fingertips, your forearms, your elbows, your shins, the tops of your feet, the tops of your toes. Allow these spaces to soften, to ground a little deeper with the sweet pull of gravity. As all the muscles along your back body can stretch and soften. Feeling your shoulder blades relax and spread outward and downward toward the floor on either side of you. Inviting in your breath now. Breathing deeply, expanding across the sides of your ribs, across your back, exhaling fully, emptying, Breathing in, creating spaciousness, breathing out, softening. And on your next inhale, slowly roll up into a tabletop position. You can rotate your kneecaps, forward, stack your shoulders over your wrists, tips are over your knees, moving through your cow and cat. Inhale as your heart draws forward, your shoulder blades hug together and down as you exhale, cat arch, chin to chest, rounding across the back. Inhale, lift through the heart. Soften into the lumbar spine. Exhale, tailbone lengthens, chin to chest. Enjoy a few more cow and cat spinal waves here, really spreading through the pads of your fingertips. Grounded across the tops of your big toes, all the way to the tops of your little toes. Smooth out the breath, inhaling as your heart actively draws forward, exhaling as you lift the ridge of your spine, chin to chest, one more. Now on your next exhale, rounding your back and drawing the hips back toward the heels, not all the way, not a full child's pose. And then inhale, come on back, stack shoulders over wrists, lift the heart, lift the hips, let the navel gently dip downward. And then as you exhale again, squeeze your navel up toward the spine, squeeze the breath out empty as you sink back. Mimicking child's pose, inhale, rotate back forward, lift through your heart, exhale, chin to chest, a little rounding as you roll back, and one more time, inhale, come on forward, lift your heart, and 
Round your back for a full cat arch. We'll return to neutral here. Let your hips sway a little side to side, head and neck can rotate, kind of wagging side to side. Feel free to rotate your hips in a big circle in one direction and then the other way. And then we'll come back to center. If you do have your blocks, bring your blocks on either the low or the mid height underneath your hands. We'll step the right foot forward and you can wiggle your left toes back behind you. You can come up onto the highest height of your blocks if you've got them. This creates the most space for the torso to lift and lengthen. And maybe you're even just coming up lightly onto the pads of your fingertips if your hands are on the floor or if they're on your blocks. This will allow the heart to lift. So we don't want the shoulders to be drawn forward. We don't want the shoulders crunched up around your ears or the back to be rounding. We want this nice spaciousness here. So much of the time if we're experiencing discomfort in our back, it's also related to tightness in our hips. So we're gonna be enjoying some juiciness in the hips today too. Why not? Ground down through the sole of your right foot, right heel actively grounding, right knee stacked over the right ankle. Big breath in, broaden across the chest. No extra effort in the neck. If your chin is jutting forward or you're lifting your chin, relax there. We want to maintain the structure in the alignment. This is known as stira, the structure, the steadiness. But we also want there to be softness. This is sukha. And in the Yoga Sutras by Patanjali, that's all he really says about the yoga asana. Stiram sukham asana. Now from here, ground through your legs, lift through your heart, and sweep your arms all the way up, fingertips lightly connect, slide the fingertips down to heart center, lift the heart to meet your thumbs, relaxed across the shoulders, strong in the legs. Take a deep breath in. On your next inhale, peel the arms open, hugging shoulder blades toward each other. A little extra lift in the heart. Maybe gently lift the gaze here as long as that feels okay in the back of your neck. And then release. Bring your hands down. Let's lengthen out the front leg. You can walk your blocks or just draw your hands back so they're more in line with your right shin. You can flex through your right foot, spread out across the right toes. And again, if we notice the back wants to round, really lift, draw forward, shining that heart center forward as your tailbone draws back. Sense into the breath, deep in the breath here. Inhale, imagine the breath traveling low into the base of your lungs, rising up, exhaling, letting it all release. and then bend the right knee again, coming forward into your lunge. We'll lift through the heart, sweep the arms all the way up, and then exhale, float the arms down. Come back to that hamstring stretch, but just for a moment, we'll flow here two more times. Anchor through the right knee, sweep your arms up as you inhale, exhale, melt your hands down. Lengthen through the right leg, and once more. Come back to your lunge, nice and sturdy, stira. Exhale, softness, sukha. Hamstring stretch, half split. From here, we'll draw the right leg back to meet the left. Melt your hips back to your heels for your child's pose. Let your forehead relax down to the mat, staying in your child's pose. Enjoy two deep breaths. As you inhale, once again, rise back up into your tabletop. This time we'll walk the hands forward a little bit more, lengthen 
through both legs. Your right leg might feel very different from your left. Hug your arms into the sides of your body. You're in a cobra position here. Spreading through the pads of the fingertips, drawing the palms down and back energetically. Engaging your glutes, that will help protect your low spine. Shoulders are away from your ears. Broaden across your chest. Deep breath in from the belly, the solar plexus, up across your heart. As you exhale, slide back toward child's pose. Two more times, just like that. Inhale like a wave, ripple forward, lengthen through the legs, draw the hip bones forward, really rising up through the crown. Exhale, move from your core, squeeze your navel back toward your spine, child. Inhale like a big wave, kind of moving through tabletop, lengthening through the legs, glue down to the tops of your toes. Lift up through the crown, broaden across the heart, exhale, Move from your deep core, hips draw back. And then we'll arrive back in tabletop. Again, hands can come to your blocks. As you step your left foot forward, feel free to readjust the height of the blocks. I always recommend bringing the blocks to the highest height so that there's lots of space. Left knee stacked over the left ankle, lengthening in the stance here, maybe wiggling that back leg back. Three, shoulders away from the ears, lots of space. In Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, the sutra, which means thread, the whole collection of sutras is like this interwoven tapestry, little threads of wisdom. Each line is a little thread. Stira Sukham Asanam. In all of the sutras, Patanjali really only references asana in this one. And he says the yoga posture, which originally meant the meditation seat, should be steady and sweet. So maybe we can find those qualities here. Steadiness, sweetness. Take a deep breath in. Feeling ground through the legs, stretching up through the arms, Pads of the fingertips come together and then slide down to your heart. Lift your heart to meet your thumbs. Relaxing the muscles in the face. Strong legs, engage the glutes, inner thighs, energetically hugging toward the center seam of the body. On your next inhale, peel the arms open. Elbows are bent, cactus arms, nice broadness across your heart. And as you exhale, bring the hands all the way back down. Let's come into our hamstring stretch here. You might wiggle your left heel forward, creating lots of space. We still wanna keep the hips stacked over that right knee. You can walk your blocks, walk your hands back so they're more in line with your left knee. Feel free to flex through the ankle, push the left heel away, spread through the left toes. Enjoy a few deep breaths here. Steadiness and sweetness. Perhaps there's steadiness and sweetness even in the breath rhythm. Perhaps even in the quality of your mind. From here, bend your left knee, stack the knee over the ankle, lift the heart, float the arms up. As you exhale, melt your hands all the way back down to blocks or the mat, lengthen through that left leg. Just flow with your breath. Let the full, slow length of your inhale sweep your arms up, and then let the entire length of your exhale bring you back down into this half split. So maybe even extending the breath a little bit more than usual, pausing at the top of the breath, exhaling consciously, slowly and smoothly. And then glide, left leg back to meet the right, child's pose once again. We'll walk the hands out. 
Take a big breath in through the nose, exhale with a sigh. And again, three rounds, rising all the way up and forward into Cobra, passing through tabletop. You can wiggle your kneecaps forward if they were apart. Glue down through the tops of your toes, strong legs, exhale. Pressing back gently, child. Inhale like a wave. So hands and knees really stay in the same position in this flow. We're just drawing the torso forward and back. One more time. Inhale, let the chest puff forward. Shoulder blades hug together at the upper back. Exhale, all the way back to child. This time, as you inhale, come forward. The arms are strong, elbows are pinned in to the sides of the torso. You could tuck your toes under and lift your hips up and back for a downward facing dog. Feel free to pedal out your feet. Ears are between your biceps, grounding through the palms, the heels of the palms, the pads, the fingertips, hip bones drawing back and up. Root down through your left leg. You could walk your big toes together at the back of your mat. As you inhale, stretch your right leg up and back into the air. And then shift forward. Step your right foot up in between your hands. Your left hand stays grounded. Your right arm sweeps up into a twist here. We know these twists are so good for the health of our spine. You can peel your right fingertips back behind you. And then sweep the right fingertips to the outside of the right foot. Step back, down dog. Left leg stretches up and back, down dog. Split on the other side. Draw up through the abdomen. Strong arms. As you exhale, shift forward. Step your left foot up. Draw back consciously through your right heel. Right hand down. Left arm stretches up. Nice lunge twist. Left knee over the left ankle firm in both thighs, especially that right inner thigh, the inner thigh energetically, drawing to the left and drawing back toward the wall behind you. You might sweep your left fingertips back behind you as well. Breathe, create space in the side ribs, and then sweep your left hand all the way down that step back to plank, top of a push-up position. Press back actively through your heels, Lengthen forward through the crown of your head, strong in your core. Inhale, exhale, bend the knees, lift the hips up and back for your down dog. And then step your feet and your hands together for a forward fold. You can keep your knees bent. If your low back is feeling a little sensitive today, Feel free to grasp opposite elbows. Let the arms gently sway side to side. Let the back of the neck really relax here. Maybe shake your head up, no, and yes. Now with a flat back, slide your fingertips up your shins. Lengthen halfway, heart draws forward. Exhale, fold. Little bend in the knees, draw the hips back, send the arms forward, just slowly passing through with Katasana chair pose. Knees are level, strong core, and then inhale all the way up to stand. Lift through your heart, stretch through your fingertips. Exhale, hinge all the way down. Two more times, just like that. Inhale with a flat back. So really using the strength of your core so you're not using the muscles of your back. Hug your shoulder blades toward each other at your upper back as you exhale, fold. A little bend in the knees, draw the hips back. Heart draws forward, Uttatasana. Hands can also be at heart for this. Nice Tadasana spine, mountain pose spine here. Inhale, all the way to stand, lift your heart, lift the arms. Exhale, dive on down. Inhale with a flat back, just flowing halfway. Draw the crown of the head forward, forward. Exhale, melt. 
bow. Root down through the feet, bend the knees. Sink back into your heels, stretch your fingertips forward. Activate through your glutes, chair pose. Shoulders plug back into their sockets. Inhale all the way to stand. And then exhale, melt your hands all the way back down. Inhale, flat back, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Plant your palms down on your mat and step back into a plank position. Pressing back through your heels, strong in the arms, strong in the legs, engage those glutes. Take another deep breath in here. And then you can bend your knees, lift your hips up and back. Slowly melting knees and shins back down to the mat, child's pose once again. And in this child's pose, you can walk your hands over to the right. Walk your palms off your mat, forehead on a prop or on the floor. Maybe your left hand crosses over to your right, or a little side bend. You might wiggle your knees out wider than your hips. Slowly walk the palms back to center, create length, and then paw your hands over to the left, sink back in that right hip, maybe your right palm resting on top of your left. And then slowly walk the hands back to center and all the way back, sitting back, sweeping your legs out and in front, extending your left leg forward, flex through your left foot, left toes facing up, your right foot can either stay where it is on the inside of your left thigh or you could cross it over your left leg. We want to really draw the heart forward and upward so we're not rounding the back. Lifting up, maybe wiggling your hips a bit or sitting on a blanket here if that's comfortable. Gently wrap your left forearm in front of your right. Stretch your right arm up and then peel your right fingertips back lightly behind you in this twist. Shoulders melting downward. Pressing forward through your left heel. Anchored through your right hip bone, left hip bone. Take one more deep breath in this twist. Slowly spiral back to center. And we'll switch sides. You can shake out the legs a little bit. Bend your left knee, press your right heel forward. Hugging the leg up toward your heart. Feel free to stay right here or cross your left foot over. Wrap your right elbow in front of your left knee as you extend your left fingertips up toward the sky with all of that length. We twist and peel open to the left. The left fingertips are so light, back behind you. Breathe in, find a little more length. Breathe out, soften into your twist. Back of the skull is in line with your tailbone, so the head isn't shifting forward in space. Everything's rising up while the hips ground downward. Enjoy another breath here. And 
slowly unwind, spiral back to center, extend both the legs out, shake them out. We'll come to the center of the mat. If you've got a block, wonderful. If you've got a pillow, a couch cushion, that's great too. You can keep your knees bent as we roll on back. And then feel free to hug your knees into your chest for just a moment. Rock your knees from side to side. Just to massage into that low back can draw small circles in the air with your knees, moving in one direction and then the other way. Just these small actions of self-nurturance are so important. Let's move into a happy baby here, bringing the soles of the feet up toward the sky. Knees drape open wide out by either side of your torso. Your hands can come to the outsides of your shins and calves, outsides of your ankles, maybe the outer edges of your feet. Just allowing gravity to drape over the body. The tailbone is heavy and grounded, no strain in your neck. It might feel good to extend through one leg and then the other, <laughs> rocking your baby from side to side. And of course, it's fine if your baby rolls over to one side, no big deal. Hug both knees back together. Curl yourself up into a little ball here. Tuck the chin up toward the chest and then release. Knees stay bent. Feet are planted on your mat, hip distance apart. And this is where we'll take our block or that pillow for a supported bridge pose. So wonderful for the health of the little low back. If you're using a block, you might want to start on the lowest height. Lifting your hips, feet again are hip distance apart, knees pointing up toward the sky. You can slide the block underneath the base of your spine. That flat bone at the base of your spine. So just to show you on the screen, the block is resting really low. We don't want the block at your lumbar spine. That's not supportive here. We want the block to be really low on the tailbone, either on the low height or the mid height, maybe the highest height, the skyscraper height, if that feels okay for you today. A pillow also works beautifully. If your block is too high, this will feel too much like an arch in your low back. So you wanna make sure that block or that pillow is on that flat bone at the very base of your spine. So the entire spine can really just be extended and soft here. Muscles in your back can relax, your legs can relax. Sometimes just exploring with the prop a little bit makes a world of difference. Now, if you feel supported here and this feels okay, you can also extend out your right leg on the mat, right heel on the floor, and then extend out your left leg, left heel on the floor. Allowing gravity to cascade down your body. Feet relax, legs relax. Perhaps arms sweep up and overhead. Breathe in deeply from the bottom of the ribs all the way up to the tops of the rib cage. Exhale, empty. If your arms are overhead, you can melt them back down by the sides of your torso. 
If your legs are extended, bend your right knee and your left knee. You can stay right here in supported bridge pose, or you can also explore and lift your legs up toward the ceiling, flexing at the ankles, pressing your heels up. This variation of Viparita Karani, legs up the wall, spread through the toes, and then bring the feet back down to earth, ground through your feet, lift your hips, slide the block or the cushion out, and melt your spine back down. You can peel your arms open out to your sides like wings, let your knees drape over to one side and then the other. Windshield wiper the knees right and left. And then we'll bring the knees back to center. Lengthen across your spine. Hug your right knee into your chest. Cross your right outer ankle on top of your left thigh. Stay there or hug your legs into your body, threading right arm in between the legs, left arm to the outside of the left leg. For this figure four position, the supine pigeon pose. Take five deep breaths. into the body and then cross your left outer ankle on top of your right thigh your left knee is pointing out to the left side and fit your four stay here or hug the legs in hands meet behind the right thigh or on top of the right shin five deep breaths shoulder blades mid back low back hips, grounding a little deeper into the support of the earth beneath you, letting your body just give way to that sweet pull of gravity. After that fifth breath in your own time, release your right leg down and your left leg down. You can bring the soles of your feet together. Let your knees splay open in a butterfly position, supine butterfly. Arms might stretch up and overhead, maybe interlacing the hands, flipping the palms up toward the wall behind. And then allow the arms to relax back down by your sides, maybe palms resting on low belly. You can keep your legs in this position or you can gently lengthen out right leg and left leg for your Shavasana. Final relaxation. Perhaps the palms are rotated upward toward the sky. Notice what parts of your body are connected to the earth. Breathing into a sense of heaviness. Letting go now. Drawing back toward the earth. Mm 
muscles are relaxed. Perhaps you imagine even the joints getting softer, more at ease. As if the whole body could just sigh here. for as long as you like. Allow yourself this time to rest, to receive. And in your own time, when you are ready, you can return to a comfortable seat with your eyes closed or your gaze soft. Gently bring your palms together at your heart. Thank yourself for making this time for yourself. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. I thank you. Namaste.